Hey there, it's your coding pal, back with another tutorial for CodeGrid. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably spend most of your leisure time browsing sites like awards, searching for that spark of inspiration that ignites your creative soul. Picture this, me, strolling through the halls of awards, searching for that perfect inspiration. And then, like a beacon in the night, I saw it. Chiara Lozana's blog, with its smooth and sick full-screen overlay menu. And guess what? We're gonna take a crack at recreating that menu using Greensock. We'll walk through the code step by step, and learn a thing or two about Greensock along the way. I'm gonna try my best to recreate this, but no promises. So buckle up and get ready to learn some GSEP wizardry as we take on this challenge. Let's dive in and see what we can do. We'll divide our markup into three simple segments. First, the toggle button that will open and close our menu. Second, an SVG element that will serve as our stunning overlay. And last but not least, the menu links themselves. So let's get started and create the foundation for our masterpiece. Let's start with the toggle button, which will be the key to unlocking our menu magic. We'll use a div with an ID of toggle button and spice things up with a couple of animating circles. Of course, we can't forget the hamburger icon, but we'll put our own spin on it to make it truly aesthetically pleasing. To achieve this, we'll use just one span element. Now, for some added visual flair, we'll add an SVG overlay element that will animate as we toggle the menu. The SVG element will contain a path element with the attribute defining its shape. We'll use green sock to animate the path of the SVG, creating a smooth and fluid morphing effect. Lastly, let's add some spice to the menu with some actual content. We'll divide the menu into two parts, primary and secondary, each with its own container to center the wrapper using Flexbox later. This wrapper will contain all our links. Now, to give it some oomph, we'll add a special effect to each menu item later using our good old friend, the Revealer. Alright, that's the HTML part sorted. Let's move on to the CSS and add some styles to our menu. First things first, we've defined our colors which will help us maintain consistency throughout our design. Let's start by resetting any unexpected margin or padding that the browser might add, giving us a clean slate to work with. Now, let's give the body some love by setting its width and height to take up the entire viewport, and to add some personality, we'll apply a background color. Don't forget to set the font family to your chosen typeface, and to prevent any unexpected scrolling, we'll hide any overflow. Next, I added an H1 element to the page to ensure that it doesn't look empty. We've added some basic styling to it, like centering it on the page and making sure it doesn't interfere with other elements. Additionally, we've made some adjustments to the font to make it more visually appealing. For the overlay, we don't need to do much. We'll just set its width and height to cover the entire viewport. Although SVG's viewport can dictate this, we'll define it explicitly for clarity. And to give it a background color, we'll add a fill property to the path inside the SVG to make the toggle button easily accessible. We'll position it at the top right corner with some margin using the absolute positioning. We'll give it a width and height of 100 pixels and center its contents using Flexbox property. Finally, we'll set a Z index of 2 to make it appear on top of other elements and add a pointer cursor to show its clickable. We'll define a generic style for the toggle button outlines by setting up their width and height with a solid border. To create those animating circles, we will use border radius to define their shape and size. The border radius values define the curvature of each corner of the element, with the first four values representing the horizontal curvature, and the second four values representing the vertical curvature. We will also add an animation called Morph, which will manipulate the border radius values to create the morphing effect. To style the hamburger icon, we'll first give it a relative position along with a height and width. For the span elements, we'll set their absolute position, centering it from top, giving width, height, and background color. We'll also add a transition property for smooth animation. Additionally, we'll create a span pseudo element for the top line of the hamburger icon and apply similar styles with a translate Y property to move it slightly up. To make our button functional, we need to define how it will look when clicked. When the button is clicked, we will toggle the active class which will transform the span elements to form a close icon. 
To finish off the styling for the menu content, we will set its position to fixed and the width and height to occupy the full viewport. Using Display Flex, we will arrange the primary and secondary navigation side by side. Additionally, both containers will have 100% height and be displayed as flex containers. Let's add some charm to our links by positioning them relatively and adding space of 120 pixels from the top to leave some room for the spectacular GSAP reveal effect. Although we'll eventually use a lighter color, for now, we'll use a different one to help you follow along. We'll also apply a different font size and some margin to the span element to make them more noticeable. To hide our text, we will need a wrapper. We'll first give menu item a position of relative, and then create a revealer with absolute position either using the HTML revealer we had or a pseudo element. We'll set its width and height, and match its background color with the overlay so it stays hidden when the menu is open. Let's keep things neat and centered by aligning our container elements to the center using Flexbox. We'll set the primary menu's display property to flex, and then define the flex direction as column to achieve the desired layout. We'll also use Justify Content to align its content horizontally, and align items to center them vertically. Unfortunately, due to limited space, I'm unable to show you the HTML code, but trust me, it would have made things much clearer. Without further ado, let's add a touch of elegance to our primary menu by styling the font size of its links. Finally, it's time to style our secondary menu. Let me first put the colors and wrappers back because the secondary menu also follows a similar approach as the primary menu, with just a few flex values updated to add some gap between the links. However, since you've already got a good grasp of the primary menu styling, I'll fast forward this part for you. Finally, to add that last touch of visual appeal, I'm creating some breathing room for the first and third links in the primary menu by adding some left margin. This will make the overall layout look more visually pleasing. I promise you it's about to get a lot more exciting. Now that we have our HTML and CSS in place, it's time to take our menu to the next level with some interactivity. We'll be using the magic of Green Socks timeline to bring our menu elements to life with some fancy easy. Let's start by grabbing the stuff we need. We'll use these elements later when setting up our Green Sock timeline. We'll first create a timeline with Green Sock to add animations to the elements. The pause property allows us to initialize the timeline in a paused state. We'll also require a path for our SVG overlay, which we can modify to achieve that eye-catching morphing effect when clicked. We'll also create a CSS rule plugin variable to target the pseudo element for the span that represents the top line of our hamburger icon. This will enable us to animate it independently later on. Now, we are setting up some initial states for a couple elements. Let's set the background color of the before pseudo element for the top line of the hamburger icon, and set visibility of the menu to hidden, which is useful as we want to show the menu only after it has been animated into view. Create a function called reveal menu where we first call reveal menu items which smoothly animates the menu items. Next, we grab references to the hamburger icon and the toggle button using their respective IDs. When the toggle button is clicked, we toggle the active class on the hamburger icon, which changes its appearance. We also use the reversed method on timeline to show or hide the menu items depending on their current state. Lastly, we call reveal menu to initialize the menu and make it interactive. Now it's time to dive into the actual animation stuff. We'll We'll start by defining the paths that we'll use to animate the overlay. We'll also define the easings that will add some character to our animation. Before we dive into defining our animations, let me give you a quick overview of the basic properties we'll be using. X and Y properties, as their names suggest, allow us to move elements on the screen based on the values we provide. The rest of the properties are similar to those used in CSS, but with slightly different naming convention. In the first step of the animation, we animate the hamburger by pushing it slightly from the top and right, while also updating the colors for the span and its pseudo element. Moving on to the toggle button outlines, we want them to have a slightly bigger appearance when clicked, while also adjusting their position. This will be achieved by passing increased width and height values to the animation. The timeline animations usually occur in sequence, but with the lesser than symbol, we can combine them to occur simultaneously with the previous animations. We'll use this symbol here because we want these elements to animate all at once, except for the links, which we'll bring in separately. To animate the overlay, we use the attribute method in GSEP, which allows us to modify SVG attributes like path data. First, we animate the attribute from its default state to the starting path and then, we animate the path attribute again to the end path. 
by using negative 0.5 as the parameter. We offset the start time of the second animation by half a second, creating a smoother transition between the two animations. Finally, we'll reveal the menu itself by setting its visibility to visible, and then animating the links to slide in from the bottom by setting top zero. Let's also add some stagger to get add some delay between revealing those links. I hope this tutorial has provided you with an overall idea of how to create an animated hamburger menu using SVG and Greensaw. With just a few simple animations, you can add some extra visual appeal to your website. If you're interested in getting your hands on the source code, you can become a pro member for a price equivalent to a cheap lock. By doing so, not only will you be supporting me, but you'll also gain access to the source code for each new tutorial and a variety of other exciting perks. See you in the next video on Wednesday.